money and power. Ever since that formidable couple came to town, this place has never been the same. Name brand families and lions of American industry first arrived here as visitors, then claimed it as their own. For more than a century, it's been a gilded playground for the haves, a wide-eyed dream for the have-nots. It's a wealthy stretch of sunshine coastline we got to experience firsthand. But there's one thing even a deep bank account can't control. The weather. On this trip, Poseidon stomped his feet. Hard. But the worse the weather, the more fish we caught. Trophy game fish, aggressive predators, and that's just the start. There's no velvet rope along the shoreline. These fishing grounds are open to everyone. Lucky for us. A few miles from Worth Avenue Boutiques, with Italian names only the 1% can pronounce, lies Lake Worth Inlet. In this rich fishery, artificial reefs, warm ocean currents, and fabled fishing clubs all play a role in attracting and protecting a variety of species. Here, the anglers take care of their own. Palm Beach is nestled along Florida's Atlantic coast. Jupiter due north. Boca Raton, its neighbor to the south. The barrier island and mainland are separated by the intercoastal waterway, which snakes all the way down to the Florida Keys. There was a time when Palm Beach was like every other Florida cracker town. The first post office was a tent on Clematis Street. Then railroad magnate Henry Flagler laid a patch of rails leading straight to his luxury hotels. The names on the hotel registries read like a who's who of American enterprise. DuPont, Rockefeller, Dodge, Kennedy. Over time, their impact transformed Palm Beach into Florida's bedazzled beating heart. A respite for anyone looking to escape the frosted Northeast. And it's still that way today. At South Sail Resort, we meet our guide. Captain Greg Bogdan. His outfit, permitted charters, has been in Palm Beach for 20 years. A 27-foot inboard doubles as his headquarters. I'm originally from New Jersey, and I came down here to college, studied marine sciences, and did charters while I was in school. And I had done charters my whole life in New Jersey. My brother and I used to run my dad's boat. I've kind of been fishing my whole life. His friends call him Salty, and rightly so. You don't get on a first name basis with these waters by being a house cat. Greg has spent more time on the water than most do behind the wheel of a car. I had an older brother and sister my mom used to watch and my dad would bring me on the boat and had a wooden crib that was screwed into the deck of his boat. And he'd throw me in the crib and take me out fishing with him. His is a knowledge based on experience. Countless days of chasing species of all makes and models. You know, I really had a, a good background of the whole area. Got to see a lot of stuff from diving and, you know, pretty unique spot that it's one of the few inlets anywhere near us that's uh, very deep water. So we got a lot of stuff that other places don't. Sport fishers crowd the slips, resembling rows of fiberglass teeth. Their bows point north and south like weather vanes. But we're headed elsewhere, east through the inlet. Tonight, the boat is prepped. We'll see what daybreak brings.
Jack Creval. No trophies with these guys. They don't really jump. They aren't pretty. They don't tail walk. But they got moxie. First fish on, bud. Yep. Get him, buddy. Gotta catch another one. Yeah. These suckers are like the kid rising through the ranks of the mob, determined to stick around. Their lack of trophy status may be the reason they're so abundant throughout much of the Atlantic and Pacific. They are ready to strike anything. Lures, live bait, dead bait. Take your pick. There is. <laughs> jacks just want to fight. Well, we give them a little one-two. When fighting jacks, get ready to face more than one. This is a school zone, but slowing down is not an option. They are built for speed and sport. Skip the gym. Work those lats with a jack. I'm no psychic, but you don't need to be to read this tea leaf. Something big and hungry lurks below. We're gonna need a bigger bait. What happened? Jaws. Sport Fishing Television brought to you by Ram Trucks, powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Buy Yellowfin, your legacy. Buy Simrad, go with confidence. And buy Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Jaws. One look from these monsters, even from inside a boat, can send shivers. The bull shark, the apex predator. They part schools of fish, making a full entrance, then headbutt their prey before going for a full swing. There he is, coming up on top. See him over right there? Yeah. Couple hundred pounder. Alongside great whites, tigers, and makos, bulls are at the top of the list for most dangerous sharks. Reason being, they can pretty much swim anywhere. Bull sharks have been found 500 miles up the Mississippi River, in Illinois. Found predominantly along the coastlines, bulls show up when schools, like these jacks, pile on our baits. The dinner bell is on repeat. We might put one out right here. See if there's a shark right in the middle of them. Yeah, that'll be a good bait size. When catching these bulls, it's all about holding on. Patience. It's letting them run the line. And then it's time to crank on it. They might spin and twist on you, but that's part of the fun. Pit bulls at play. They eat anything and everything. Turtles, stingrays, birds, mollusks, even other sharks. Bulls can live up to 14 years and can grow to be above 11 feet in length. They can easily weigh up to 500 pounds. Most sharks need salt water to live, but somehow bulls have adapted. Their kidneys and glands manage to keep salt in their bodies, even when they're in fresh water. Scientists continue to study bulls to figure out this special adaptation. You'd think that great whites would have the strongest bite. Nope. Bulls take the top spot. Their jaws have a force of 6,000 newtons. That's equal to picking up a grizzly bear, and then some. These thick-necked predators match up with what's to come. Good old mother nature smile full of sharp teeth and a storm on the side. Driven to Fish, powered by Ram Trucks.
Sport Fishing Television, powered by Ram Trucks, is being brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. By Penn, let the battle begin. And by the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. from the radio predicts our future. A white-knuckled afternoon awaits, but we can deal with it. The weather ahead looks rough, but by the end of it, it's a time to remember. A good time to remember. Dolphin, Mahi, Dorado, many names, many talents. Altogether, one of the best game fish out there. A more than willing striker, an aerobatic fighter, one of the best meats in the biz, and gorgeous. Like a neon sign, but underwater, chromatophores in the skin of dolphin expand and contract to reflect their bright blues, greens, and yellows. Dolphin grow at an astounding rate up to 18 inches in a year. They are distant swimming pelagic athletes, living in the tropical and subtropical waters of the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans. Not many fish can claim that much real estate. In Florida, different sized dolphins get their own nicknames. Here's the breakdown. Peanuts, undersized fish. Schoolies, a mix of above or below the 20 inch fork wing. Lifters, eight to 15 pound fish that don't quite warrant the gaff. Gaffers, quality fish in the 20 to 30 pound range. Slammers, 40 plus pound trophies. One of the most common behaviors is their attraction to floating debris. Dolphin rely on current edges, weed lines, and floating structure for their food, including sargassum and floating kelp patties. Some say it's the perfect game fish. We tend to agree. The king. No crown. He might have the title of king mackerel, but he's an every man's coastal game fish. Found both in large schools and as reclusive individuals. From inlets to beaches to open near shore waters. Damn near everywhere. Kings in the 10 to 30 pound range are common. And the smokers, the 40 pound plus ones, that's what we're here after. We get close with this catch. That'd be a good one in the tournament. Nice kingfish for the smoker. Smoke them if you got them. Next up, African pompano considered the strongest of the jack family. Where there are sharks and kingfish, there are these guys. You'll see the small ones have these streamers. When they're really small, some of these streamers go out 15, almost 20 feet off their body. You know, really a beautiful fish. One of the toughest light tackle fish around and a rare find in the inlet. You know, the smaller ones are pretty good eating, but we're gonna let this one go. It's not another shark. It's a doppelganger for sure, but this species is the only one in its family, but a close relative to the remora. Most tropical waters in the world are home to cobia. A tough fighter, a torpedo with gills, delicious table fare, and a coastal nomad. Let me know when you're ready and we'll take them on this side. Yep. Coming up, I'm gonna circle under the boat here. Whether you fish off Australia, Japan, India, or the Southeast United States, the cobia you catch are the same species. Their arrival energizes anglers in a heartbeat, 
These brown bombers make you work for a spot on the plate. All right. Palm Beach is filled with variety. It might be due to the love and respect of the locals. In fact, there's an 81-year-old club dedicated to the sport and the conservation of it. West Palm Beach Fishing Club, I've been part of since I came down here to college. It's a very, very old club, one of the oldest in the country. They do a lot for conservation, uh, building different reefs, and it's really a great club. The West Palm Beach Fishing Club not only started a tournament that's in the history books, it also created what we know as release flags. Our forefathers here at the fishing club, it's amazing that they had the foresight to know that hey, these animals are much more valuable catching them and letting them go than catching them and putting them on the dock. Table, or the table, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the list of names that the club has spoken for is downright legendary. For a quaint club along the intercoastal, it housed some of the heavyweights of fishing and Pulitzer Prize writing. Ernest Hemingway, of all people, sponsored a trophy in the Silver Sailfish Derby, and it was that trophy there. It's called the Old Man in the Sea Trophy. Tom tells me that even though this club has certainly had its famous encounters, it still remains open to all. A community of like-minded anglers, having fun and protecting their home turf. The value of these hometown fish are always on the club's mind, like eliminating record placements for the sake of the species. Releasing them is more valuable than some words on a plaque. The club's angling committee uh, decided long ago that certain species of fish just should be all release. There's no need to get your name on the board anymore because the fish are far too valuable. So all of the billfish categories in the club record book are officially retired. As the West Palm Beach Fishing Club knows well, the sailfish is one of the world's most prized game fish. Of all the species we've caught, the sail is the one we're most eager to meet. Will the fish and the weather play nice? Don't count on it. You really want to watch the rods, because sometimes you get spooled and there's a fish on there. We have 440 yards to go. We'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> Sport Fishing Television is being brought to you by Ram Trucks. Powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By King Sailfish Mounts for that once in a lifetime catch. By Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. And by Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Atlantic sailfish, smaller and more nimble than its cousin, the blue marlin. Sails dance on the surface and put on a good show. They have an attitude that compares to a spitfire teenager, the racehorse of the sea. It's an accessible trophy. Near shore to blue waters on both sides of the Atlantic, tailwalking sails readily take trolled baits and lures, as well as live pitch baits. With the cranky storm on our backs, we throw up some kites. We also put out some flat lines. Quantity wins in this battle. As many options as possible. When it comes down to it, kite fishing is suspending baits right below the surface. It's fun, but draining. Always checking the horizon for the line watching if the bait takes a quick duck when a sail approaches. Letting line out, bringing line in, continuously adjusting the line. Kite fishing is where you tell that novice who says fishing is easy to get bent. Kite fish for a couple hours and you'll feel the ache. Weather, even when it's brooding, can be your friend. It stirs up the environment. It's felt above and below. An arsenal of rods and reels and a big cooler of fish are what's left from our Palm Beach adventure. 
It's time to divide the spoils. I'm glad we had our man Salty to navigate the journey. For Greg, a salt spray in the face is a breath of fresh air. It's a reminder of the life he loves. Out on the water, a deep knowledge of a local fishery is more impressive than having your name on a hotel or skyscraper. It's something money can't buy, and nepotism can't pass on like an heirloom. It's earned one cast at a time. Even with a reputation built on a lot of commas and zeros, Palm Beach is still a place where a kid from Jersey can hold the keys to an underwater kingdom. There aren't many destinations that bring together blue-collar workhorses and Fortune 500 icons on the same playing field. But that's the thing about the ocean. It doesn't review your account balance or check your credit score. The billionaires can own the land, but the sea? It remains free, unconquered. 72% of the Earth doesn't belong to us. We belong to it.